You put a lot of care into this. I've heard that this is a $1,400 fishing rod. And we talk about US here, not Kiwi. What makes it $1,400? Well, there's a lot of time and effort that's gone into building this rod. We've used all our technology downstairs and our blank manufacturing. I mean, everything we do is one by one. We've painted it this color, which is, is unique. The guides on this are titanium, with the torsite rings, very high-end guides, very lightweight. I heard that people saying this is a Ferrari of fishing rods. I'm using the word Ferrari because that's the way I think most people can relate to some of the things you, you're mentioning here, but I heard words that I, I have no idea. Spining and, and so on. Just walk me through some of the concepts that's important in making a quality rod. The manufacturing method we use when we're making blanks is, is tube rolling, that's the technical term. And with anything with tube rolling, you'll always get a seam where the material ends. And that seam tends to form a spine where when it's bent, the rod will naturally want to fall into its natural profile. It'll, some rods have a more distinct spine, some less. It's important to build the rod on the spine if you can locate it, because the spine is basically the thicker part of the rod, and you want that on the inside of the curve where your compression is the most and the strength is most critical. How do you figure out? Do you have to sit literally and sit and bend it and figure out where the, where the thicker parts are? Yeah, so this is a seven foot long one piece rod. Uh, it's a small bait casting rod. A lot of builders will just flex the rod like this and then they'll just turn it. It wants to naturally find a point of equilibrium where it's just naturally happy to be in that flex. But when you're getting into a thicker rod like this, where it's very hard to bend, you need uh, some equipment. We've developed this machine, it's probably the only machine in the world like it, and some people would say it's an overkill, but I, I think when we, we're wanting to get the most out of a rod, you need the right tuning instruments. So the products that you supply help me out with CTS. Uh, talk me through the range, because I see some differences here. We've got some fiberglass, we've got some carbon fiber, we've got some finished rod here. What, what is your business? Our main part of our business is, is the blanks, which we supply to the rod builders. And then our newest avenue in our business is, is finished rods as well. So for many, many years, we've had people ring us up and say, look, I want a CTS rod, where can I get one built? And we've always said, well, we don't build rods, we build blanks, you'll have to go and see one of our rod builders. So we've addressed that situation now and, and when we get a phone call from somebody saying oh, I want a CTS rod we can build it. Why the two different materials? Fiberglass was the predominantly used material for fishing rods for many many years particularly because of the cost. Carbon fibre many years ago was just astronomical price so, so fiberglass was where, where fishing rods started well before they were cane. In the last sort of 10 years there's been a real renaissance with fiberglass some guys like that warm, flexible feel of a glass rod. Some guys like the clinical um, precision of a, of a carbon rod. A fiberglass rod will bend um, three times further than a carbon rod. The glass rods do have their place with, with tighter situations. Tighter meaning small closed areas where you uh, might end up having to hide, get the rod back like this so that the, you, know, you can land the fish. Uh, in a carbon situation, you wouldn't want the carbon rod to be doing that. We're really happy with how it looks and our customers love it. They love the fact that they're now getting product from us and it's branded professionally and when they assemble it they'll have a, a professional looking rod that is, is second to none.